Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Pomiopuru vlog. My name is Ria. I am your host, and you are watching another series on Yachting International Radio. Today, my guest is Tom Worthington. How are you, Tom? Good. How are you, Ria? Good, thanks. Now, the reason we have you on board here today is because you are participating in a Palma Yacht Crew event on the 13th of February, um, and it's called Investment Awareness Meeting. Tell us a bit about this. Yes, so this came about actually from a thread on, from the Palma Yacht Crew Facebook groups. Um, basically, a few people felt they'd been, well, a few people, quite a few people uh, felt they'd been missold uh, policies through various, um, let's call them advisors, um, might not be that accurate to call them that, but um, they've been signed up to terms which they didn't realise um, they were signing up to, basically, where the, there's penalties for releasing the money or not releasing the money and long tie-in times for their investments. And with the number of people being affected by it in Palmy Yacht Crew, we, so one of the women that signed up to it a few years ago, her husband thought that it'd be a good idea to get maybe a group together to talk about it um, with maybe an expert um, and including Lars, as obviously he's got a huge outreach within the yachting community to be able to maybe give them a bit more insight into how investment products work and how financial advisors work, how to get paid, that kind of thing, because it's kind of kept a bit, little bit cloak and dagger, mostly on purpose. Um, so we would like to basically shed a little bit of light for the community on, on the subject. So why do you think, has it been like yachties that have been targeted or is it in general? Um, it seems to me that a large portion of yacht crew have been targeted and mainly because they are, well one, they don't have much free time and that creates kind of two advantages for the people. It means they don't really have time to read through all the brochures and the paperwork and the fine print. And it also means when they're traveling, and they've got a huge disposable income um, that's being earned, it might not mean as much to them to chase um, someone. I don't want to be rude when I say that to Yacht Crew, but, you know, 10,000 euros to someone that's earning that every three months can e more easily be overlooked to someone that takes 10 months to earn that. Right. So th maybe necessarily the Yacht Crew aren't following, you know, sort of their investments as closely as they should be. Yeah. I mean, it's not their fault generally. It's, you know, it's the lack of time they have. Mm -hmm. And So the world in general, I mean, it, you know, as far as investments and, and investment schemes, I mean, there are investments that are worthwhile investments, but there also are many companies out there that literally have investment schemes. Now, these, why do they get away with it? Because more often than not, um, they're actually doing it barely legal, but still legal. Yes. I mean, there's a few companies, and I'm not going to name anyone, um, that have created products which could be missold, unfortunately, um, such as, for example, financial advisors, the way they're paid commission is they, are, they take a percentage of the amount invested and then times it by how many years they're investing for. So if you sign up for 25 years, they're going to get double the commission if they sign up for, you know, 10 years, 15 years. Um, so obviously it allows the product to be missold. So it's, in my view, and this is a personal view, not one of Time Asset Management who I work for, is it, uh, it's kind of both their fault because one's mis-selling or not doing due diligence properly on the client for the product that they're, be, they're recommending to the client. And second, the company is allowing it to happen. You know, if you see on a paper, bit of paperwork, you've got a 21-year-old um, deckhand, that's earning two and a half thousand a month and he's putting a thousand euros a month into this and he's supposed to keep that up for 25 years. You know, it comes a point where it's got to be dual responsibility um, because they're supposed to do due diligence on the clients on suitability as well. Um, but unfortunately, most of the times they've actually signed up to these conditions. Well, and that's again because they, and to be honest, so much of this paperwork that is put in, it doesn't matter whether you're 21 years old, it doesn't matter whether you're in yachting. The fact is most people really don't read the fine print anyway. No, there is this, and I also do think on several occasions there might be the fact that they weren't given everything as well. They maybe get given the brochure, 
um, but not what we call KYC, which is know your client. So basically, you have to do what's called a fact find as a financial advisor, find out you know pages of information where they stand on a financial point of view, and also all the terms and conditions. I mean, one in particular which was heavily sold. I know the terms and conditions, but they were about fifty pages long. Um, you know, even when you t talk about you know signing up for an offshore account, you know the terms and conditions are ten pages long for a bank account. So yeah, that that is I think why, you know, when you I think that's why your crew were heavily targeted because they're in port for a week. They want to get it sorted before they go over to the Caribbean and start another season. Whereas you know, if you're talking, if you sold it to a teacher or you know plumber or anyone that was kind of more land based they can take that home they can read it they can take a month to decide before they sign up they can do some research uh, where unfortunately time is of the essence with the crew a lot of time um, forgive that wasn't supposed to be a pun um, which means you know they are an easier target well and I guess as well the fact that someone at 20 or 22 years of age that has decided that they want to take a look at long-term investment. I mean, that's huge. That's something that should be commended because not a lot of people, no matter what industry they're in at that age, are sort of thinking towards the future. So it's a shame that they are actually targeted in this way because it does tend to turn them off overall in, in the fact of, of or, or the concept of investing. Exactly. I think the saying is no good deed goes unpunished. Um, you know, something that designed for yacht crew should be flexible. It shouldn't have tie-in times, especially for young crew. Um, when you look at investing in the markets, it, let's call them, you know, it's not just stock markets, it's bonds and other equities as well. You've got to have a time horizon of five to three to five years minimum um, to make it worthwhile. Now, if you've not got that, you could. You also need to be able to get your money if you need it. If you leave yachting, or you know, you can't get a job next season, or you you end up having a baby, or you want to buy a house, or there's all these things you've got to consider. Which is why, luckily, um, what we're going to be talking about in more detail um, at this awareness uh, meeting will be the new laws that have come in in the last couple of years which stop these big commissions and it means that most European countries you have to get the client to sign off on the fees which isn't just a percentage which goes to the company and then the advisor gets part of it it's basically the client has to sign off on the fees that that advisor is going to get and it's monetized as well so it's not just I'm going to get one percent it says clearly right I'm going to get three thousand two hundred euros for example from this policy that you're writing are you okay with that which gives then the client more opportunities to go, well, actually, no, you know, I'll do it for a thousand, but three thousand seems a little bit rich. Um, so it, it creates more fairness. So there's kind of the, it's the called MIFID 2, PRIPS 2 has also come in, which is uh, more transparency on information given to the client um, when you're presented with a financial product that they're trying to sell to them. And also you've got things like Factor and CRS, which are coming into banking, which also make it much more client protected if you like well you know another thing that i saw just not too long ago was one of the largest investment companies in the united states has gone green as it were um they are only investing in in their portfolios in in companies that are sustainable and environmentally friendly um yep. is this something that you offer and, and something that you're seeing an increase of in crew that they want to invest in in companies that are sustainable um, it is not so much in, in, in crew specifically, but just in general. Mm -hmm. um, we run ethical portfolios and we have done for about seven years now. And believe it or not, our ethical portfolios actually outperformed our mainstream portfolios last year, which is quite a nice surprise. Um, it tends to be, please don't laugh, it tends to be the women um, more that are kind of more socially, environmentally aware. Uh, we've gone through loads of different terms over the last couple of years. It's been ethical, uh, sustainable, social responsibility, SRI. It's now ESG, ethically, social governance. Um, they'll probably come up with a few new acronyms to confuse people. But mm -hmm. um, basically, there's kind of two main approaches to it. But it's a very, very difficult subject because one man's you know, a uh, nuclear power station is is one man's clean energy and it's another man's Hiroshima. Uh, BP, for example, is um, an oil company and it's not favoured by a lot of people around the world, but they spend the most on renewable energy research every year than any other company in the world. So you've got things like positive and negative screening, which, you know, it makes it a difficult one. So we kind of class it as shades of green. 
you know, do you want to be really dark green? Do you want to be light green? You know, right. um, it's very hard to classify. You know, you can't, we can't even um, do property portfolios because um, if you invest in hotels, for example, you sell pornography and alcohol, which is unethical. Wow. That, that, I, I never would have thought of that. That's interesting. No. Yeah. Huh. Well, so this, this investment awareness meeting, however, it is targeted towards the audience and it is targeted about, and are you going to be discussing the things that somebody should look out for, the, the terms and, and conditions that they should look out for, um, as well as suggesting places that they can go, I mean, aside from yourself, but places that you feel are um, ethically friendly towards yacht crew? Um, I'm not going to concentrate, we're not going to concentrate at all on where the crew can go. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'll leave contact details if they want to talk, but um, we don't want to use um, the fact that people have been missold things to promote anyone. So we're going to leave that kind of aside and do that separately through Palmer Yacht Crew through other means. But what we're going to be focusing on mainly is what investments people have. Mm -hmm. We're inviting them to share their stories so that people can hear that they're not alone. So a little bit of an AA group kind of feel, if you like. Um, because some people are embarrassed that they've been, yeah. you know, missold or ripped off, or you know, some people use the word scam. Um, and also, I will be doing a, a little bit on how to choose an advisor because even though these policies have allowed clients to be ripped off, one of the most important things is to choose your right advisor. And in the past, I did it. I was a financial advisor to York for seven years. There's just a few fundamental questions you can ask them to you know, to make them either run for the hills or show you the credentials to, so you know they are the right people to be helping you along with your financial goals. Brilliant. So if you have been an investor in the past or actually are looking to invest for the future, that this is definitely something that is worth attending. I would focus more on the ones that feel that they've been missold for now. And um, we'll mm -hmm. be doing more events on options for crew to invest in the future. But this one's mainly about people that feel that they've been mis missold things and, you know, how they can go about it. We're also um, talking to a couple of lawyers for the possibilities for them to sit. They're not going to approach anyone. Um, I'm, I've told them specifically they're allowed to sit at the back and listen to people's stories and for them to decide whether it's worth a class action suit. Because, you know, if a lot of these things were signed, for example, in Spain, you know, they came onto the boat in, let's say, STP or... Uh, I've, you know, um, Morvel or Club de Mar, I want to name a few ports because ports, I don't want to single out one. Um, so it's signed in Spain. The client's a UK citizen, for example, and it was done through an Irish registered company issued from Isle of Man. Now, that's incredibly complicated when it comes to law. You know, you're talking yeah. four different sets of law and possibly four different sets of lawyers. Now, a class action can help zoom that cost um to fight against it um rather than each single person going at it singly so it's also about finding out whether there's enough people in mallorca enough crew that are based around palma or mallorca that that would be a viable option for them so basically just trying to help people that have been stung in the past is it just here in mallorca or has it been across spain in barcelona and and in the french riviera as well as far as I know, the main uh, yachting sites have all been hit. So you've got, I'm not so familiar so much with the Caribbean, but I do know lots of cases that were signed up in France, Antibes, Monaco, um, lots in Parma, Barcelona, uh, Ibiza even. Um, there's, you know, wherever they can, they're allowed to step on a boat and sell what they want to sell. Unfortunately, it has been a, a case where people have been missold financial products. So it is fairly widespread. It, unfortunately, yes, which is one idea we had as well about um, either live streaming it or recording it, the session, the first session. So obviously mm -hmm. people that can't be here and the Caribbean season has kicked off now. So that can't be here could watch it back uh, or watch it live. Um, we're also toying with the idea of just recording the speakers because, you know, we people that have been ripped off might not be like, like to be pressed all over Facebook and the internet of being told that, you know, of sharing their story, if you like. So we might keep that part private and mm -hmm. then just broadcast the, kind of the information side of it so people can watch it back. Right. Well, you know what? It sounds like it's going to be very interesting. And for those of you out there, I know whenever something negative happens, people are very afraid to talk about it because they don't want to be judged. And 
unfortunately, in the yachting industry, unless life is perfect, you are obviously judged. Um, <laughs> it's just the way of things. Yeah, but um, so yeah, for sure, if you have been stung by any um, misinformation, as it were, within the financial industry, please do attend. We are going to have this, of course, uh, on the Palma Yacht Crew sites. It's going to be all over. Lars will be placing that there. Um, we're going to have another interview again um, with uh, Colin is his name. Colin, yes. Yeah, we're, we're going to be hosting him as well. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about his story and as, as a victim of, of a bad investor, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be having that as well. But thank you so much for your time, Tom. I know you're a busy man. Thank you. And um, I really look forward to this meeting and, and uh, seeing the results. Yeah, hopefully Thursday the 13th around 5.30, 6 o'clock. We're just waiting on confirmation for venue, so hopefully that'll be up on Facebook soon. And I uh, hope to see you. Well, it's one of those I don't hope to see you there because it's... <laughs> It's bad news, but you know, if, if you have been affected, then you're more than welcome and uh, there's no pressure there to come. Wonderful. Again, it's the Investment Awareness Meeting on Thursday, the 13th of February at 5.30 or 6. Uh, details to be announced shortly. Um, and we hope that you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the only time that we'll say that, but <laughs> we are there. Probably, yeah. yeah. Thank you for uh, watching another edition of our Palma Yacht Crew Vlogs. This is Rhea for Yachting International Radio.